Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be taking a look at Medal of Honor Above and Beyond. Right, so I'm going to be showing you a bit of gameplay and talking you through my experience. I'm going to kick off with the story mode. So, when the game was first announced, they were setting some pretty lofty goals with this game. So they're looking to honour some pretty classic moments from World War II. So they've been doing interviews with veterans and they're recreating these moments in the game. Um, that set some pretty high expectations. Expectations that I'm not sure the game has delivered yet. So it's clear when you start playing that they are favouring gameplay above tone. See, um, the scenes they're, re they're recreating have some pretty devastating um, emotional impact. That doesn't really carry over in this game, but the mechanics feel really fun. It's a uh, it's really en enjoyable shooter, very much an arcade shooter, rather than your sort of military sim or anything like that. The game looks great. The character models are really well detailed. The scenes are really strong. The physics, on the other hand, are pretty poor. So if you try and interact with most of the environment, your hand will pretty much fly straight through things. If you try and interact with any of the NPCs, again, your hand will fly straight through them. I'm not sure that's acceptable nowadays in VR. If you compare it to the experience you'd have in a game like Half-Life Alex or um, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, things that you can really kind of work with whatever's around you, um, it's worlds apart in this game and you, you really feel that. There's a good mix of missions in the main story. So the campaign lasts between sort of eight to, to ten hours, depending on how you play it, and they throw a sort of large number of things at you that keep you on your toes. I don't feel it dragged through too much. I feel like that felt like the, the right level for this game. Before each mission, you have a quick little vignette, and that sort of sets the scene. I think they've done that really well in this game because you really kind of feel part of the scene. Um, you can kind of interact with people as, as it's going through, and it, it feels, feels really well made. The best thing about the single player experience though is the gallery. So the gallery, you might have seen a lot of this content already before the um, game came out, but it's sort of shown you the interviews that have been done with the veterans that helped shape the game. And there's some really moving stuff in there, well, well worth a watch. Now you unlock bits of this as you go through the game. So um, it really gives you a reason to keep playing through that main campaign. This is the spot and they had two gates that we sort of pushed through. But the multiplayer is the bit I was really excited for. So when they dropped that multiplayer trailer a, a um, few weeks ago, I got really excited. It looked like the game we've been waiting for for ages. It looked like it was going to be the Call of Duty of VR. So like, we saw that there was going to feature a few game modes. You've got things like Team Deathmatch, Domination, um, a, a, a sort of demolition style mode. And it looked really good. It looked really, really exciting. Has that come through in this final version? Well, if I'm honest... They got all the hard stuff right, but they've messed up on some really, really easy bits. So the gunplay is fantastic. The, um, it feels like a really quick, fast paced game. You can jump in and out with ease. It's really, really enjoyable, but it's lacking some features that I really want to see in a game like this. So there's no progression. So when you play a game like Call of Duty, you level up your character, you unlock new unlockables as you go through the game. Um, there's a really strong tier system and it gives you a reason to keep playing. That isn't present in this. All you've got is a stat box that doesn't really tell you much. And um, the only unlockables come from the main campaign. That isn't really enough for me. The major disappointment though was the lobbies. So when I first fired up this game was on launch day. Now I, f I really struggled to fill a lobby with humans. There was lots and lots of lobbies filled with bots. Often I was finding myself being the only human player on my team. And that's just, that's just not good enough for a AAA title like this. You expect a lot more, especially on launch day when there should be so many people playing it. Now, I kind of understand how we got in this position. So when they first announced the, um, the date this was going live, it was a pretty good time. So it was just pre-Christmas getting that sort of festive boom for sales. And there was nothing much else going on at the time. But since then, things have changed and it hasn't worked out very well for Respawn who made this game. So Cyberpunk 2077 was delayed and delayed and delayed. And in the end, Cyberpunk came out just one day before Medal of Honor. Now that's an incredibly highly anticipated PC game. So all these people that would be jumping onto a PC VR title, a Medal of Honor, now aren't going to because their time's filled on, um, on Cyberpunk that they paid for a day earlier. Add to that the high price for this game. So this game cost me 50 quid. Now that is a lot for a game and a lot for a VR title. So you're expecting a lot from it. 
And I think a lot of people that would have bought this game have just dropped another 50 quid on um, on Cyberpunk a, a day or so earlier and now don't have any spare cash and aren't going to be jumping into this game for some time. That means the lobbies are going to struggle to fill, so you're going to have to play with these bots. Now, the bot experience really isn't very good. So the bots are really unintelligent. They're really easy to kill. Um, I've had a fair few games where I've la actually lost the whole match without dying and just getting massive, massive amounts of kills. That means my kill death ratio looks incredible, um, but it doesn't really coincide with my skill level for the game. So by all rights, I do not deserve the kill death ratio that you can currently see on my stats because I'm being put against these bots that are just so easy to kill. That's really frustrating. They need to change that. So they need to either find a way to fill the lobbies properly or improve these bots so you get a better experience. Now credit to the game, when you try and find a match, you drop into one almost immediately. And um, that's, that's a great thing, there's no waiting around, there's no frustration about can I get into a game. But maybe if they did make us wait just 30 seconds or a minute or so, they could fit us into a lobby with other humans and we'd have a much, much more enjoyable time. This needs to change if they're going to make it a sustainable game that's going to you know, last in the long run. Another oddity for the multiplayer game is that as soon as you finish a match, it drops you straight into the next one. Now there is a bit of a, um, a wait in time when you get to the map, so you sort of have 30 seconds or so to wander around and look at your surroundings. But what I would like would be dropped into a, um, into a menu screen where you can play with your loadout, you know, change your character, make some changes ready for the next game, and just feel a bit more intuitive. It really doesn't feel like they thought about the user experience enough when creating this multiplayer game. But if you can get past that and get into the actual match, the match is pretty fantastic. So the gun mechanics feel great, everything does what you want it to. There, there are reloading mechanics that you have to do manually, but they're not sort of over intrusive, so you can remember them pretty easily. They're quick and simple to do, some of them overly simple, but, um, but it makes for quite a fun arcade shooter experience. So how was the performance? So I've been running this on two headsets. I've been running it on the Quest 2 and the HP Reverb G2. Um, they're both quite high spec headsets, so you get a fa fairly good um, resolution on each, and it means that your PC needs to, needs to be pushing out um, some fairly strong numbers. Now that was a concern for me because when they first announced this title, they announced what the recommended specs were to run it. And that included a minimum of a 2080. Now that's tough. Um, I'm actually sat waiting for my 3080 to be delivered and I've been waiting for three months now, still no sign of it coming. So I had to go into this running my 5700 XT. So I was concerned that I might not even be able to run this at all. Now, if you're in a similar position, I'd like to ease those concerns because I can say that it actually ran really, really smoothly for me on that. But I can understand why they've tried to limit those expectations on the performance you'll get. So there's nothing to really play with in the settings menu on this. In most games, you'll be able to open up your, your graphic settings, maybe reduce a bit of shadow, reduce a bit of draw distance, re reduce down some textures so that you can you know, fine tune things that will run on pretty much whatever hardware you've got. You can't do that here. There's nothing to play with at all. It does run on Steam, so you could go into your Steam menu and you play with some, you know, your resolution, super sampling, things like that. But there's no in-game textures and things you can play with. So be prepared that you may struggle if you have some, you know, very underpowered gear. I've enjoyed playing it on both headsets. I've been pretty much 50-50 split in time between the two. Um, of course, the Quest's great fun because it's got no wires, so you can kind of move around a little bit more, you know, ducking in and out of cover without worrying about getting anything caught. The, the G2 is great for being able to spot enemies far off, so you can really, I'd say it adds a good sort of 50 metres. And um, some of the guns in this game ha have really good range of them, so that, that is a big advantage. Um, so I do find myself scoring a bit higher when I'm playing with the HP Reverb G2. But I enjoy the experience on both, um, and I think I will continue to jump between them. Well, there you have it. That's Medal of Honor. I'm going to be playing that for some time. I have been enjoying it. That is all from me today, though, folks. Thank you very much. Do us a favor. Press the like button if you like that video. If you'd like to see more videos like that in the future, press subscribe. It's been good having you, and I'll see you again. Thank you very much. Goodbye.